Okay, so we are going to do a tutorial today on, uh, we're going to set up a NAS with TrueNAS. It's uh, formerly known as FreeNAS. And we're going to be able to have that in our house somewhere on an Ethernet cable. And we're going to have uh, a separate Windows computer back up to it. And kind of a distinction here from other tutorials, because I could not find this, is that we're going to have it just back up to we're going to have it back up using the default windows program for backup like you can search for backup and you'll find this utility in windows okay so first things we need to do we need to go to truenas.com and download truenas core formerly free nas hit the download button i've already got it downloaded uh, also, we're going to flash it to a USB drive. Let's search for a utility called Rufus. Rufus.ie is the official website. Rufus is cool because it, um, it's like when you download it, you, it doesn't even install. It's just kind of a, a standalone program, executable file. Okay, so once you get those, what we're going to do, i got TrueNAS here, Rufus here. Okay, quick pause. One thing is that when you, uh, when you put TrueNAS on your flash drive, it is going to put some partitions on that that you're not going to be able to um, delete, even with Disk Manager. And so I will give you a, uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a way to... Uh, get that off of your flash drive so that you'll be able to use it for some other things installing uh, instead of just installing TrueNAS. We're going to open up Rufus. Okay, so for the device choose the flash drive that we're going to uh, use to install TrueNAS on our NAS. Boop selection. Okay, so we're going to select TrueNAS.ISO. Okay. And we are going to start. So, this is a very important warning. All data on the device will be destroyed. You, so, just make sure under the device you have the, um, the flash drive that you're wanting to use. And then you can hit OK. Because you don't want to... Okay, so it is ready now, and you can close this, and you can eject your flash drive. Okay, now we're going to bring it over to the computer that we're setting up, and I'm going to show you how I've uh, plugged up the hard drives and so forth. Okay, so while you're doing this, um, while you're plugging up the hard drives and so forth, you're going to want to have the computer unplugged, and you want to also take um, precautions with static to touch metal before you touch components or have some kind of anti-static device. So this is actually the rig that we're going to use and don't be intimidated. I've been testing, I've been uh, using it for a few different things, but you see for the storage, we're going to use this drive and this drive over here, which is another one terabyte and uh, free NAS. So I've got free NAS on this, touch some metal, here to plug with this. So your hard drive connections, uh, basically all SATA nowadays. M.2 is the other, other interface, and so you could always use that for your primary, but for something like a NAS, you're going to probably use a slightly older computer anyway. So this is your power, and this is your SATA data connection. And then I basically got the same thing, same connectors right there data power and for every data cable you're going to connect it to the SATA ports on the motherboard okay so we're getting ready to start up the machine that we're going to use for our NAS to so plug in the flash drive so you've got your um, USB stick on the computer 
And when we turn on the computer, it's going to just boot as usual, perhaps in the nothing. Static. And, um, jeez. So you can Google boot menu and then the maker of your motherboard, like Biostar, MSI, and, um, and see which key you can press during startup to be able to get into the boot menu. So here we go. I think I've got Biostar. It's going to be F9. I just found out. So you can just kind of continuously press F9 every once in a while. Alright, there we go. So, I have the sand disk. So we'll boot into the setup process. So let's run through that. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's choose one. Let's install. Choose option one, so I'm hitting enter. Okay, select one more drive where true NAS should be installed. So we're going to select the drive with space bar and hit OK. Enter. Okay, you may not get this, so but you're gonna have a fresh install. You may not get this if your drive is already installed, but you may have to format using this. Yes. It's your root password, so just choose a password. Let's go with BIOS. Chances are you have a little bit of an older computer. Create swap partitions, fine. Okay, the true NAS installation on the SATA port that we chose has succeeded. So let's reboot. So, okay, it's highlighted. Press enter. Reboot. Yeah, I think you okay, so first we, uh, when it rebooted, we came to a um, a screen with the like a it was like a text image of true NAS. and um, now it's going through this uh, the continuation of the setup. Basically, we're just going to get a um, IP address here in a moment to use and be able to move on to the next step. If it for some reason says that this is a true NAS storage disk, um, you can use the bot, the uh, the key to go into the boot menu again and uh, boot from the the disk that you installed true NAS on. Oh, let's see what the cat does. Oh my god. What's it doing? Ah! Okay, so you see the web user interface here? Um, that's what we need. So we're going to switch back over to the other computer and we're going to bring up a browser and access that interface. Our true NAS is at 192.168.0.51. Here we go. Username is going to be root. Password is whatever you chose in the setup process and log in. There we go. All right, so we are going to set this up. Let's go to storage, disks. And then we're going to preview what we got going on here. Those are all online. Let's go to pools. We are going to add a pool. 
create pool. We're gonna name it um, mirror backup is a good name. Mirror would be if you had two disks and they're gonna be the exact they're gonna both be the exact same so that if one craps out. <clears throat> Encryption, um, it's funny, the actual uh, data won't be encrypted, but the, uh, okay, yeah, this is a better explanation. The pool level encryption does not apply to the storage pool or disks in the pool. So it applies to the root data set that shares the pool name and any child data sets created. But still, I mean, that would be, uh, that would add something to the value of this. So. Not needed for most cases. So let's go to suggest layout. So here, the available disks are right here. And then this is going to be our array. Suggest layout. Okay. It is suggesting to mirror it. There's some options here to do the stripe. That would just be um, unique data on each disk. And so we'd be able to have two terabytes of backup instead of one. But if you do mirror, you're going to get one. See, it's going to create. Okay, so basically, it's telling it's going to format our data. So you're not going to want information on that hard drive that you're going to want to get back. This is going to erase all that data. Create pool. We did the encryption, so we're going to download the encryption key. See, this is the one I've done a while back. Let's save that somewhere on your computer. Okay, so there we go. And when we go back to the dash dashboard, we're going to see that um, pool that we made. So here's the mirror backup. Available space. Because it's a mirror, we get about one terabyte. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to accounts and then users. We're going to add a user. This person's name is going to be John Jingleheimer. Or that's actually the full name, so of course. John and Jingleheimer are separate names, and so it suggests a, a username J Jingle H. Okay, I think I can remember that. Email? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's not required. Password? You can come up with a password for the user specifically. Use your ID. That's an arbitrary number, I believe. Um, okay. Non existent. Okay, so we got that. Go ahead and choose the, uh, the most. So choose the pool that we just created. And then give this user the permis permissions that you want. Um, we're going to go ahead and submit that. Cool. There's another user. We can create as many as we want. What if we had uh, several users in this household and we wanted to uh, give them all access? So just create as many users as you want. Next thing we're going to do, we are going to go to sharing. And for Windows, most people use Windows. Um, I'm going to add. We're going to go and choose the user that we had created to give them permission to back up. And we are going to submit. Enable service. 
Cool. Sweet. So we have a permission online. Okay, next thing we're going to do, we're going to set up the backup in Windows, which is pretty easy. Uh, the interface is a little bit goofy. So we can just type in backup. Technically, this is under the sprocket of settings. And then update. Under Windows Update, and then it'll be on the side here for backup. So this is file history is saving copies of your files for the first time. Okay, so as promised, we are going to save that flash drive that we had used. And so you can type in disk into your search and find the option that says create and format hard disk partitions. And that's going to bring up disk management. And so I've got a 64 gigabyte flash drive. And here's the issue. This is right protected. I just need this to be all one thing. You actually can't, you won't even be able to do anything on here. So we're going to open up Windows PowerShell. We're going to go to Start, go to the Programs, Windows PowerShell. Right click, click Run as Administrator, which I've just learned helps with everything. I've got some commands I'm going to uh... okay so <clears throat> okay so just type in disk part and list space disk okay so this is a way to double check it will even give you the uh, capacity and so my flash drive is online look at this disk number 21 I need to clean up a few things so next thing we're going to do we're going to select disk space 22 this 22 is now the selected disk and so this is the most beautiful thing if you hit type in clean and hit enter It succeeded in cleaning the disk. That's it. Let's go back and check. Okay, and so now that's going to be unallocated. And you can right click, new simple volume, and just hit next. Next, you can name it something. Orange, flash. Next, finish. And that's going to do a quick format, this is the default option. you got your flash drive back. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more uh, little computer videos or just little things that you can uh, hack around. Maybe some things to save your utilities and uh, save resources as well.